Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So yesterday I was going over the fact that you have six days to dump Square Merchant Services before they begin screwing small businesses. In that video, I'm going over this thing that more merchant services providers are doing where they no longer refund the fee when you refund a customer. So if a customer buys $1,000 worth of stuff, you pay $29 if you had a 2.9% transaction fee. If that customer calls you and says, hey, my bad, I made a wrong order, can you refund me? The merchant services provider used to refund the fee they charged you of $29. Now they don't. And even if you're somebody who doesn't do refunds all the time, just from a principled point of view, why should you eat this? Like, honestly, I mean, this fee did not exist 25 years ago. Has the cost of computational power and bandwidth to process these transactions gone up or down from the days when a Pentium 2 was considered top of the line hardware? This is just another instance of a company realizing that they, once they have you locked into their system, they can start nickel and diming you more and more and more. And this is something that is becoming more and more prevalent in the modern day. As technology evolves, as computational resources become cheaper, as bandwidth becomes cheaper, as BlackBerry meows louder, in spite of all of this, the price of the services we're dealing with are going up while the cost of the manufacturer and the provider are going down. Now, Northridge Fix, who is a good colleague in this industry, commented on this video and he made an excellent point. I'd love to switch to another merchant, but what makes you think the new merchant won't follow the same path in the future? When PayPal did this, we immediately stopped working with them. With Square, it's different. We've been with Square for a long time and have our feet deep down invested in their system. Everything we have is directly integrated and linked to Square, so it's hard switching to another merchant and rebuilding everything from scratch. Canceled orders are minimal and like any business, sometimes you have to eat it or pass it on to the customer in another way. And point taken, one of the things that many of these providers know is that they have you invested deeply in their system. And once they get you deeply invested in their system, they know it's gonna be difficult to switch, which means they can start to do this type of screwery. The reason that I don't wanna stand for it is once PayPal does it, then Stripe does it. Once PayPal and Stripe do it, then Square do it. Once PayPal, Stripe, and Square do it, then everybody does it. And then we live in a world where Amazon and Walmart are gonna be the only two companies left standing that can actually refund a customer without having to eat a fee. And I do not want to live in a world where there is an even less playing field than there is now between the Amazons and the Walmarts and us. So I will switch anytime this occurs. And one of the th ways that I do this is I use authorize.net, which makes it very easy to plug in somebody else anytime this type of screwery occurs. If I'm using a POS system that uses authorize.net, this makes it easy for me to just log in new credentials and continue to use my existing system, my existing online store, my existing CRM system, and everything else. Now, what I wanted to discuss is something in a sister industry, in the restaurant industry that goes on from a company that's kind of doing something very similar to this, because I genuinely do believe that just because it's happening to the restaurant industry and I don't run a restaurant is not a reason that I should not focus on it because eventually the stuff always comes back to us. Again, when it comes to right to repair, what's going on with farmers and tractors is what's going on with medical equipment is what's going on with wheelchairs is what's going on with just doing MacBook motherboard repair. And I think the same is true here. So this email is from a subscriber and it says, my father sells credit card processing and one of the services we provide is Clover. Clover is a point of sale system designed primarily for restaurants and I help him with all his Clover accounts. You have to start by buying their hardware, which started off more reasonable, but now it's crazy expensive. They then have monthly subscription fees to use it. It includes an online dashboard, large third-party app store, text message and email receipts, and much more. One of the main features they provide is online ordering. For starters, they just raised their subscription pricing a few months ago. For counter service restaurants, it went up from $40 for the first and $10 each additional device to $54.95 for the first device and $15 each additional. These clients were already locked in because the replacement hardware cost to go to another provider was much higher, and there was nothing we could do other than just suck it up. They did not grandfather anyone into the old pricing. I thought this was disgusting and then wrong, but they can justify it by saying the price of everything went up. What completely pissed me off was this morning when I got an email saying that starting July 1st, any online order of $30 or more will be getting a $1.50 fee billed to the customer. I don't even know how I'm going to bring this up to my clients. I feel like Clover has them by the balls. There's a lot more to discuss, such as Clover not having an RMA process for their hardware out of warranty. If you open a Clover device, it will say tamper and a device will be permanently bricked and there is no way to RMA hardware out of warranty. Just buy a new one. There is no way to take a Clover from one processor and use it on another, which kill the secondhand market for these devices. And he shows me a screenshot of the email here, starting on July 1st. Clover online orders include order fees. Here's what to expect. Yeah, this, this kind of stuff sucks. This is the world that we're going into, where every single company has their own little closed ecosystem. They get you to buy into their closed ecosystem. And then once you're bought into their closed ecosystem, you're kind of screwed. And I find this to be very surprising because when you Google Clover, literally the first result on Google is Clover, simple rates and no surprise. Yet after buying a system that can cost $2,300 or upwards of $4,000 that cannot be used with anybody else, 
you now are going to have to pay a fee that was never announced at the time that you purchased this. So once you've bought into their system, once you've paid $4,000, once you're paying one or $200 a month for it, once you have set up your entire restaurant around their system that cannot be used with anybody else's processing, now, well, they can surprise you as much as they want. Again, they're advertising here, simple rates and no surprises. To me, I would consider this a surprise that you are now going to be charging my customers an additional dollar and 50 cents. Now, again, you may be thinking, well, a dollar and 50 cents, who cares? That's not a lot. Of, that's a trivial amount of money. A dollar 50 here, a dollar 50 there, now refunding the fee on this. This stuff adds up. And the more that we tolerate it, the worse it is going to get as time goes on. And it is one of those snowball effects where it's 2.9% fee, we're not refunding now. $1.50 every single time you buy food that you didn't have to buy before. And then by the time the snowball gets to the end of the hill, it will be something horrible. And by the time that happens, it'll be too late because everybody will have bought into these systems. Nobody will have said anything. And that will be the world we live in. The way that we deal with it, the way that we make a change is right now on the early days when we can argue about it, when we could say $1.50 is not a lot of money or, you know, the 2.9% fee, sometimes you just got to deal with it. Who, how many people ask for refunds anyway? The way we deal with it is when it's a small snowball. We don't wait for it to become a big snowball. And here's the question that I have for you. How often have things gotten better after a company adopts an anti-consumer practice and gets away with it? How often have other companies decided, you know what, we're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna go in the other direction instead of going, huh, they got away with charging that fee. Maybe we could do it too. How often do things actually genuinely get better? I would argue that they don't. I would argue that the way we force them to get better is by not tolerating it now. The people that have bought into this system, the people that have spent $4,000 on something and set up their entire restaurant around this $4,000 system, they, especially the smaller restaurants, might be less capable of just switching on a dime because this happened. And I realize this video is not going to be helpful for those restaurants who were already unfortunate enough to set their entire restaurant up around a very closed system that locks you in and then screws you the way that Clover is screwing and surprising their customers here in spite of their no surprises advertising. What I hope this video does is inform future customers that are setting up their restaurants, looking to upgrade or change their systems or start new restaurants on what Clover's business practices are so that they don't give them business and maybe if they do not get new business that may make them rethink screwing over their existing customers with these type of fees but most importantly perhaps it will make other companies think twice before implementing this type of garbage themselves because you bet your ass if they manage to get away and there is no sort of backlash from their future customers or existing customers regarding adding fees to their customer orders in a way that they never said that they were going to do, that every other company in the industry is going to go, huh, that would be a great way to juice quarter three revenue. Again, if this device that you paid $4,000 for it breaks out of warranty and you open it, it will give you a tamper message. The only way to remove the tampered message is to request a new device from Clover. Now, they say that this is because, you know, they need to protect the credit cards and the data security and this, that, the other. There's no way to wipe this device. That's the other thing. There's, you know, like on my computer, I can do DD if equals dev slash u random of equals dev slash sda and good luck getting anything off of that disk they don't have a process like that for any of these machines if anything happens to your clover device outside of the warranty period that you have paid four thousand dollars for your solution is to pay them another four thousand dollars for another one because there is not an rma process in place for these devices and in spite of what they say in their advertising which is no surprises that is exactly the opposite of what many of their customers are going to find to be the case once they start billing their customers an additional fee that they never stated up front when they bought into the system. This is not something that is only going to affect restaurants and it is not something that is only going to cost you a dollar and fifty cents because once you tolerate it with your 2.9 percent fee, once you tolerate it with your dollar fifty cent fee, I assure you a hundred percent the fees will go up and the beatings will continue until you own nothing and you won't be happy about it. Dumb square, dumb clover. Again, Companies like this do not have your best interests at heart. They are more than happy to pay for advertising that claims that there are no surprises in spite of the fact that they will send out emails increasing their prices and increasing their fee structure and changing their fee structure so that they are billing your customers something that they were not 
billing your customers before. This is screwed up. This is not okay. Any company that takes part in this is a company that, in my opinion, you should not buy from. Be very, very, very fucking careful when you are dealing with a closed ecosystem like this for your business. Again, my online web store is powered by Magento. It is open source. Nobody is going to take go into there and say, we're adding a dollar and 50 cents to every single one of your customers or any of that kind of nonsense. Because if anybody were to actually try to do some shit like that, somebody would fork the project and get rid of it. Or I'd be able to delete that from the source code of the project and call it something else. I kind of think it would be kind of cool to call it Magneto. But in all seriousness, we have the power to stop this. It means dealing with it early on. It means dealing with it before it becomes a problem. Because if there's anything that can be said about anything in our industry, if 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people didn't stand for the fact that they weren't getting schematics with their products, people wouldn't stand for the fact that the manufacturer was the only one that was able to provide parts for any of this stuff, that they closed off the supply chain, everybody else, we wouldn't have to deal with right to repair. We wouldn't have to dumpster dive through crappy parts vendors and waste thousands of dollars wiring money to random shady people, hoping that they would send us what we need in order to be able to repair the products and the devices that we service and work on. We would have a fixable and repairable world with more of our freedoms. We would not have to fight to take back our freedoms because we would have never lost them. And if there's anything somebody watching this video gets out of it, it's that I want to live in a world where we never have to fight for our freedoms because we never allow them to be lost to begin with. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. By the way, this is Blackberry the cat. Has she not been a good kitten? She did not walk across the keyboard or try it at the space bar once. And for that, I think she deserves a treat. So once this video is over, I'm going to walk over to the kitchen and I'm going to get Blackberry a treat. All right. See you in the next video. Bye now.